Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 18.4 beta 2 has been out for a few days, but there's even more features to talk about since the iOS 18.4 beta 2 is out. What's new video. We'll not only talk about new features and changes, but we'll talk about some Apple news as well as the overall experience since I've been using it full time on the iPhone 16 pro max and iPad pro. And we'll talk about your experience as well, based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, there's over 10,000 votes and 133 comments I've gone through through all the comments to determine what the experience is like for everyone. So be sure to stick around toward the end of the video as we'll go over some of your comments as well. Now, Apple this week announced new iPads and a new MacBook along with iPhone cases and a Mac studio, which was a bit of a surprise. One of the odd things about some of the latest Macs is there's no Wi-Fi seven in the MacBook air and Mac studio. Now I'll get my hands on these as soon as I can. They're available starting three 12 or March 12th. So let me know what you think of these. Are you picking up a MacBook air, a Mac studio, one of the new iPad air models, or maybe just the basic iPad they updated as well. However, it doesn't have Apple intelligence. Apple is fighting the UK government's demand that iOS contain a backdoor access into encrypted data. Apple was told to put this into their software and they're fighting back. And this week, Apple filed a legal complaint with the UK's powers tribunal to try and push back on this and make sure that doesn't happen. So we'll have to see how this turns out, but at this point it looks like Apple's going to fight that. Brazil is the latest country to demand Apple open up iOS with side loading. The Brazilian court has now given Apple 90 days to comply with allowing side loading as the EU has had it for some time now. Now Brazil wants them to do the same thing. I think Apple should just add it around the world if you want it. And if you don't want to use it, you don't have to, but either way, they may end up doing that as more and more governments demand it. Apple updated Shazam this week. So if we go into the app store, you'll see if we scroll down with the latest update version 18.9, they've made syncing songs to Apple music and Spotify better than ever. They've also got the option to simply toggle sync your songs. And it says, don't forget to keep Shazam history safe in sync between your devices to do this, turn on iCloud sync in Shazam settings. So they've updated this significantly. And if you use Apple music or Spotify, you'll have this update here for that as well. So be sure to update it if you haven't already. Ready. Now it's official and Apple confirmed it. Apple seems to be slipping. Apple officially delayed the new Siri with context features for later this year in a recent statement to John Gruber of Daring Fireball. They said Siri helps users find what they need and get things done quickly. And in the past six months, we've made Siri more conversational, introduced new features like type to Siri and product knowledge and added an integration with chat GPT. We've also been working on a more personalized Siri, giving it more awareness of your personal context, as well as the ability to take action for you within and across your apps. It's going to take us longer than we thought to deliver on these features, and we anticipate them rolling out in the coming year. This is kind of what people have been saying. Mark German has been saying they're delaying it back to iOS 18.4 and then iOS 18.5, now iOS 19, and it looks like it may be delayed even further. Mark German gave some insight into the Apple intelligence situation at Apple, stating that some within Apple believe the features could be scrapped altogether and then rebuilt from scratch to roll out sometime in 2026. This is a bit disturbing as Apple announced it. They had a YouTube video going over basically what it could do in an ad, and they They've since pulled that ad on YouTube as well. So this is something that I think they're slipping quite a bit. Maybe they need to hire more people. Maybe they need just, just to take a step back, redo this and get it working properly. So we're not really sure what's going on with an Apple with that, but this is some pretty major news and they've actually confirmed this. So it looks like it's going to be a while before we see Siri with context. As far as new features this week, well, there's quite a few more to talk about. The first thing has to do with messages within messages earlier in the week. I talked about how Apple added new emoji. You can see one of the new faces here. We have a shovel, we have a splat, a harp, a fingerprint, and now they've updated the flag for Syria. The more recent flag for Syria is now added. And that's something that's been changed as well. RCS is now enabled in more locations on many T-Mobile MVNOs. That's basically a carrier that utilizes T-Mobile services and then can use their services as their own and then sell those off. Ultra Mobile, Tello, US Mobile, Google Fi, Mint Mobile, and many others, even in other countries as well, are now seeing it enabled. So let me know if you have RCS enabled if you're running the beta now. Now, if we go into photos, within my pinned collections, if I go over to my recently deleted, 
Go and view the album. Within Recently Deleted, there's some new icons at the bottom. We have the option to recover all, or we can delete everything just by tapping on the little trash bin there and delete from all devices. If we go back and go into Utilities, then go to Edit, under Edit, we now have the option to reorder anything within Utilities. So if I want to move it up, up here, maybe move it down to here, you saw some odd overlap there, but we can move these around now and resort them or reorder them. So we'll tap done, they're reordered, and then they're reordered in our utilities. With AirPods connected, if we go into my AirPods settings here, just press and hold in the control center, some people are seeing an all new icon for adaptive. I'm seeing the colorful icon, but some people are actually seeing it as sort of a gray or gradient there. If we go into the Maps app, in a future version, Apple is adding support for NACs, or North American Charging Standard Adapters, so you can find charging stations that utilize that connector. That's now the North American Standard, and everything is changing over to it eventually, so you'll be able to search that directly in here. Now if I turn on the flashlight, I typically have it assigned to the action button. The overall animation is much larger. So they've just made it a little bit larger here. Of course you can control it the same way, but the overall size of it has changed. If you're using something that's utilizing the privacy icon, it's now outside of the dynamic island. If you have multiple things using the dynamic island, maybe we can activate this here. We'll go into the clock. Maybe we can activate something to go in there, such as the stopwatch. You'll see it sometimes will jump between different icons. You saw it right there. It jumped from this icon or the dynamic island to the stopwatch and then over to the right. It's just sort of a nice animation where it jumps between those things as a placeholder. So these animations are great and whoever does these at Apple does a great job. So if we stop, swipe home, you'll see it jumped back in. Now within the app store, the first time I opened it after using it for a couple days, there was a new splash screen. It says what's new on the app store and Apple Arcade, a more powerful search, automatically summarized customer reviews. And that's something we're seeing. We're seeing new AI generated or derived customer reviews. If we scroll down, you'll see these here where we have a review summary. So it says users say that the app that they use the app daily. They appreciate its accuracy, speed, and convenience. They also like that it provides lyrics and helps them discover new music. If we go into shortcuts, I showed you one of the new shortcuts where we have an action. There's quite a few of them that Apple has added for settings of specific apps. For example, we have maps. So if we type in maps, we can change map settings or we can change Safari settings. There's quite a few things in here now. So we have Safari, Reminders, Calendar, Apple TV, Books, Notes, Voice Memos, and Weather. So you can just change those with a shortcut now if you want to do that directly from your shortcuts for Weather or all of those apps. If we go into the wallet, if we're utilizing Apple Wallet and we're using a savings account, it now requires Face ID in order to open that savings account. Now, of course, with this update, we also gained new controls for Apple Intelligence's visual intelligence, and you can utilize it right from the control center or assign that to the action button. And you'll see my phone is acting very odd right now. We'll talk about performance in a little bit, but it's seemingly a little slow here and there. But let me know if you're using these action buttons here from the control center, or if you're using some of the new ambient music modes as well. Now I briefly wanted to mention the iPhone 17 as we're hearing more and more good news about it. The iPhone 17 air is expected later this year as a replacement to the iPhone 16 plus with an all new design. A recent post from Ming Chi Kuo has said that the iPhone 17 air will have a new high density battery. And while we don't have any specific size details, we can go over as far as the battery capacity. We really hope Apple is finally focusing on battery life more. And as a slim phone sounds like a good idea. I don't think many people would buy it if it had poor battery life. Apple recently introduced the iPhone 16 E and it actually has pretty good battery as they increase the battery size. So hopefully we see this as a trend in future iPhones. Now, when it comes to the next version of iOS, many of us are waiting for iOS 19. And of course, with all of these delays and Apple falling behind a little bit, it could be a big redesign according to John Prosser. Now, maybe that's why we're not hearing a whole lot about it. He said that it looks more like Vision OS. It might have some rounded icons and it looks like we could have a new camera app and many more changes. Last year supposedly is when they were supposed to redesign it with iOS 18, but instead they focused on Apple intelligence. So maybe we'll get a redesign this year and that's why they're falling behind with Siri and other things, or maybe we won't see that at all and we'll just get a bug fix update. But either way, according to John Prosser, we could have some sort of big redesign this time around.
Now, when it comes to releases, well, we could be on a weekly schedule at this point. We don't really know that for sure, but based on what we've seen in the past, we could see iOS 18.4 beta three as soon as this week. We could see it Monday. If we don't have it this week, of course, we'll have it next week. And typically by the time Apple reaches beta four, we're on a weekly schedule. So if we see it this week, we can expect beta four, maybe on the 17th or sometime early in the week and then maybe beta five or an RC and a final release, maybe in the first week of April or second week of April. We also may see an iOS 18.3.2 release. I've talked about this for a while. It's going to be a while until we see a public release of iOS 18.4 and Apple has a lot to fix with iOS 18.3.1. So not just security updates, but bug fixes. And hopefully we see that. We also know that iOS 18.5 is in the works, according to Mac rumors, as they've seen it in their analytics. So Apple's updating a lot of things at once, and hopefully we see some great changes in the future here. We also could see the WWDC or Worldwide Developer Conference 2025 announcements go out sometime this month. And typically Apple announces that it's going to take place, and usually it takes place in June. That's where we see iOS 19 and all of the new software. So that's probably in the first or second week of June. So we should know that sometime later this month if Apple continues to do what they've done year over year. Now, as far as the overall experience of iOS 18.4 beta two, well, it seems to be a little bit better than beta one, definitely less buggy, a lot less issues, but it's not perfect. When using the action button to recognize music and Instagram before it would crash the phone and make it respring, they fixed it in beta two, it seems. And also type to Siri is working again for many where it wasn't before. For some people, it just wouldn't work. Now it has more context. It works a little bit better and works based on different apps. So if you're maybe in podcasts and then you activate it, you'll get suggestions about the app that you're in. So it didn't work there. Let's try music. And if we go back into music, double tap again, go into type to Siri. It now gives us more context based on the app we're in. Play the background music playlist. So that's working well. It's working for most people now. Also, some have said that the new Siri, where we press and hold and it comes around the outside, has disappeared for them and they've got the old Siri back. This may be because it needs to download some Apple intelligence updates again. So if it isn't working now, let me know. But either way, you can go to your settings, go down to Apple intelligence and Siri, and sometimes it will just say that it's downloading. So as long as it's done, you should see that. Now, there have been a few odd issues, such as the MagSafe battery pack not working for some people, and a reboot seems to fix that. There's been some visual bugs and alignments off when you're using widgets specifically on the home screen for some people. And also there's been quite a few lags and stutters. You may have already seen that while I've used this. I was just looking around here earlier, going into an app. Sometimes it just stutters for no reason. Also the wallpaper bug is definitely visible. So if I swipe home, sometimes it desaturates or resaturates, it seems to desaturate more often than not. And sometimes the keyboard just completely freezes. Music sometimes stops when you're using CarPlay. However, with this beta, I haven't had connectivity issues. So it seems to stay connected well, at least in the car I'm using. However, some people still have issues with it disconnecting. Also, connectivity still seems to be an issue for some people. Disconnecting from 5G and Wi-Fi, where it will just disconnect or you'll just have poor signal altogether. So there's definitely some issues here. So iOS seems to be lacking in quite a few ways and slipping behind many different other operating systems that are strangely being more and more reliable and more and more stable. iOS used to be the gold standard for that, and it looks like it's slipping a little bit. Now, when it comes to performance, as long as we don't have the stutters, it's super smooth. It's much more smooth than beta one. There's less stutters, but again, occasionally there's stutters from time to time, but scrolling with pro motion is nice and fast. And overall, it seems to be pretty good that way. Going into apps again, if it's not occasionally doing the odd stutter going into the photos or camera, no problems there. As far as the heat of the device, well, it is quite warm. And I think that's just from demonstrating type to Siri a moment ago. It's odd how, when you try a simple task with Apple intelligence, the phone heats up quite a bit, but it's well within spec and Apple manages the heat, but it definitely warms up. So let me show you that with the thermal camera compared to the same version on the same phone, just sitting idle. So on the 16 pro max running iOS 18.4 beta two with Apple intelligence running, we're at about 30, four or 35 degrees Celsius, it seems. And then on the one that's just sitting idle, we're at about 
29 degrees Celsius. So a very big difference just from running something fairly simple. As far as battery life, well, it's okay on this version. I would say it's better than beta one. And if we go to battery, go to battery health, you'll see I have 100% with 139 cycles. And you can see more details here with coconut battery. Using it today, you'll see here, I had two hours and 29 minutes of screen active time, 14 hours and 11 minutes of screen idle time. So you'll see I used about 75% of the battery. Now I have used this on and off. You'll see here, I only had two minutes the other day, one hour and 37 minutes since I was switching between the 16 E and this, but you'll see overall, it does seem to get me through the day. However, sometimes it dips way down probably because it was still processing in the background, but overall the battery is decent, but not incredible. Now I did run benchmarks on this as well as the iPhone 11 and iPad pro. Let's go ahead and take a look. Now every phone here is running iOS 18.4 beta two or iPad OS 18.4 beta two. And from left to right, we have the M4 iPad pro 13 inch, then the iPhone 11, then the iPhone 16 pro max. And if we take a look, the 16 pro max scored three, 1,519 for single core, 8,770 for multi-core. That's pretty good overall. It's not the best I've seen, but it's definitely on the high end and seems to be working quite well. And that goes along with the performance I talked about earlier. So in general, it does pretty great, but there are occasional hiccups. Now, as far as the overall experience and what you had to say, let's take a look at some of your comments. Tom Schroeder said, I've been running iOS 18.4 beta two on a one terabyte iPhone 16 pro max for the past couple days. It seems stable. The only true bug I have observed is that the first time I use it with CarPlay on my Subaru Ascent, which requires a wired USB connection. The second and subsequent attempts to plug it in results in CarPlay on Subaru saying it can't connect although the cable still supplies power to the phone. When I restart the iPhone and plug it in again, it connects, but only for the first session. The eight travel girl said, I'm using iOS 18.4 beta two on my iPhone 15 pro max. And so far the apps are running smooth and no lagging issues battery so far is stable. Novellian SSRA 3852. Hopefully I'm saying that properly. I have iOS 18.4 beta two on iPhone 16 pro max battery life is poor. And the connectivity is poor, especially using apps that need location services. Anujanand 03 said running iOS 18.4 beta two on my 15 pro max. The battery backup is close to iOS 18.3.1 after the background processing was completed. The build feels stable with few jitters while navigating through different UI. Iservis said, hi Aaron, iOS 18.4 beta two on my 15 pro max type to Siri didn't work for me with the first beta, but now it's been solved. I've seen some stuttering and flashlight shortcuts on the lock screen. Also battery life is excellent. Seven hours and 30 minutes screen on with 50% of my battery performance scored a little better in multi-core for me. And in real usage, my iPhone runs with no other issues. Now with storage, if we go back and take a look at that, we'll go to general and then iPhone storage, give it a second to load. And at the bottom, you'll see iOS is still taking up 19.53 gigabytes. However, it does look like Apple intelligence gained 0.1 gigabyte since I last checked. Checked. So 19.53 total 7.1 for Apple intelligence. As I've mentioned before, system data goes up and down and you can see that in real time if you just watch it. So that's everything with iOS 18.4 beta two. If you found any additional features I didn't mention in the video, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.